The communion is designed to bring new hope and new strength for the battle. Let me, let me break this down and see if I can do this justice. I'll say it again. The communion, the communion is designed to bring new hope new strength, and new strength for the battle. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 15. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, what do we have? A great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, since we have him as our high priest, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. We, we learn from this scripture a bunch of awesome truths. We are affirmed that Jesus is the Son of God. We are told that Jesus is the high priest. And we are told that, that he lived a life where he also was tempted. Like, you're not alone. Temptation will come. The difference between you and I is because he was both man and God at the same time, he was able to withstand the temptation of sin. Therefore, bringing him to be the perfect sacrifice to pay the price to forgive our sins. But we learn here that, that because he was tempted in every way, that he can relate to us. A lot of times we think that Jesus can't relate to us, that like he's so far away. No, no, Jesus understands everything you're going through. That's why when you come to him and you share with him your prayers, he'll be like, yeah, I get you, I understand. Like when you, when you, when you come to him and you share with him like, 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 like your pains and your struggles, he's like, listen, I get you and I understand because he can relate to us. He's, he understands us. But we see he's a son of God. He can relate to us. But we also see from the scripture is that he is a what? A high priest. The role of the high priest was very interesting. Because the high priest was the, the ultimate intermediary between the people and God. If you, if you go through the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews 8.3, it says that the high priests were appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. They were both to give a gift to God, but also a sacrifice to God to pay the price for atonement, for, to, to set us right with God, to eliminate our sins. That's what they gave, both gifts and sacrifices. It also says in Hebrews 5, 2, is that the high priest was supposed to be able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray. In other words, the high priest is kind of like the modern day pastor. What are my roles, and please don't get offended, and if you do, whatever. One of my roles as a pastor is to deal with ignorance and to help those going astray. Do you understand? Now, I don't liken myself. I'm not a high priest. I'm just trying to tell you that's one of the roles. Here, the high priest had the highest role over all the people to do what? To deal gently with the people to help them in their ignorance, not their stupidity, they're two different things. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge. Stupidity is a medical condition for which we just won't have to pray for you, all right? But ignorance is a lack of knowledge. He was to help them in their lack of knowledge and help those that are going astray. This was the role of the high priest. And we just find out here that Jesus was the high priest. So what are Jesus' roles? Jesus was to give gifts to God. And offer sacrifice to God. It just so happens that Jesus was both the offerer and the offeree. You understand? Another role was to what? Deal gently. See, Jesus is trying to deal gently with us. He's trying to, 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 to teach us in our ignorant ways. He's trying to get us to know something. That's the role of the high priest. But if, if, we, if we continue on and read in Hebrews chapter 5, 10, we find out that Jesus was a specific type of high priest. And this is important for what I'm going to share. Jesus was a specific type of high priest. In Hebrews 5, 10 it says, And he was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus was a high priest with the roles that I just shared, but he was a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Are you guys still with me? Did I lose you yet? 
I know we're going a little deeper today. Okay, so he was a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Okay, who was Melchizedek? Melchizedek was a high priest back in the Old Testament. And when he says he was in the order of Melchizedek, what he's saying is that Jesus' nature, his character was like that of the high priest Melchizedek. What was the character and the nature of the high priest Melchizedek? Genesis chapter 14, 17 through 18. After Abram returned from defeating, oh gosh, I should have practiced this word out loud, Kedor Lamor, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> after he defeated K, and the king's allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shava. That is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, who? Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. Stay with me. Oh, this has got to get opened. Jesus was a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a high priest, but the order of Melchizedek meant that not only was Melchizedek a high priest, he was also the king of the times. Which means that if Jesus was in the order of Melchizedek, who was both high priest and king, We've got to understand that Jesus is both high priest and king. And when we see Melchizedek here deal with Abram, we see an example of how Jesus deals with us. When we look at Abram, in this story, in this context of scripture, he had just come out of battle. He had just had a victory because God showed up on his behalf. But how many of you guys can relate with me and know that when you have a battle, you're probably coming out kind of tired. You've probably put forth some effort. Abraham was coming out of a battle. What, what I find very interesting, if you continue to read this story, just the next chapter after we find Melchizedek interacting with Abraham is we see that Abraham is about to go into another battle. He came out of one physical battle, he's about to go into another battle. That was the battle in the home. Because we find here, we're reading out of chapter 14, when we get to chapter 16, we find that Abraham gets home again. Having had the promises of God that he was going to be the father of many nations, he finds himself again with, Sar with Sarai, with Sarah. And he finds himself again still without child. How can you be the father of generations, but you still ain't got kids? Are you hearing me? So what I see so interesting in this dynamic, and I pray you guys see it with me, is we've got Abram who's coming out of one battle. He's coming out of a physical battle, but he's about to enter into an emotional and a soulful battle because things in the home were still not the way they needed to be. If you need help because you can't relate to this yet, just yet, he had a battle outside of the home, and now he's got a battle inside of the home. He had a battle in the workplace, and now when he gets home and has to face the family, he's about to have another battle. Are you hearing me? Abraham was between battles. God, stay with me. He was between battles. And we already learned that Melchizedek was what? Both high priest and the king. What does Melchizedek do for Abraham or for Abram when he's between battles? What did he do? Did you catch it or did you miss it? What did he do? Abraham just came out of battle. He's about to go into another one. You know what Melchizedek did? He brought him bread and wine. He brought him bread and wine. Why did he bring him bread and wine? He was between battles. Because he needed sustenance and refreshing after one battle that would sustain him through the next battle. Are you still with me? Jesus was in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus was both high priest and king. And when Jesus sat down with his disciples, 
understanding that they were in one battle and they were about to face another battle because he was no longer going to be with them. Now they had to go back out and do life alone until the Holy Spirit came. They were going to be between battles. That is us, guys. Oftentimes we find ourselves between battles. And just like Melchizedek gave him bread and wine, Jesus sat down and said, here, bread and wine. And remember, every time you do this, you're remembering me, proclaiming me. Every time you are within between battles, remember my bread, my body, my blood, the wine, is intended to sustain you between battles. Are you hearing me? You see, the communion is not just about bread and wine. It is about the sustenance and the new life that holds us together between battles. I don't know about you guys, but I have some battles in my life. I have things, news that I'm given that I don't want to hear. I don't know how I'm going to handle. Struggles that I need to get through, both, both my own problems and then other people's problems. Here we see Melchizedek gave bread and wine, which are strength and refreshing between battles. So when Jesus offered the bread and wine, he was offering the strength and refreshing between battles. 